Thank you, Justine. Then I, I want to thank Densply Implants for involving me in this very exciting launch uh, event that we're having at, at, the, at the big show this year. Um, and without further ado, I would like to get started talking a little bit about the EV implant, which has been a very exciting uh, addition to my practice. And if the slides will go. And you've seen this slide in Bjorn's presentation. And like he had said, we are talking really about the evolution of implant dentistry. And a little bit more of a simplistic look at this would be something where we're really moving the paradigm along as far as implant design, prosthetics, and so forth. And as the sole periodontist on the panel this morning, I'm here to talk about the surgical experience with the EV implant. And so without further ado, I say let's go and get started and talk about the virtues of this new implant design. Now, why must implant therapy evolve? I think an important point to make at this juncture is that what we were using right now, the OsteoSpeed TX implant, is an excellent implant. There is a lot that is good about this implant, and I think uh, rightly so, uh, the people at Densplank did not try to reinvent the implant, but just improve upon what is already good. An easier placement as the surgeon certainly is something uh, that appeals to me. Uh, a predictable healing is something that we certainly want for our patients. Uh, for those surgical specialists who are then sending these patients back to their referrals, an easy restorative process is always something uh, to build both the practice and the patient confidence we want predictable function, predictable aesthetics, which I know the speakers that will follow me will cover. And we want stable function, health and aesthetics. We don't want to see untoward side effects, negative outcomes one, two, five years after these implants have been placed and restored. In general, what we want is better outcomes. And as Bjorn said, this is an implant that is really built on the foundation of excellence. We have the osteospeed surface, which remains unchanged, the micro threads, which were just harmonized but have been part of this implant system for over 20 years, the conical seal and the connective contour, which have been around since 1985, have not changed. So this is not a brand new implant with, with a whole new need to retest everything. It's just improved upon some of the things uh, that the users have said they'd like to see improved upon. And when you're designing this newer type of system, what you want to know is that you're putting something on the market that has long-term confidence in its performance, it's easy to use, it's versatile, and its indications are, are almost limitless. And you want a very robust, strong implant. And the way to do this is really the way that Densply did it. They did it the right way. They went through extensive mechanical testing uh, extensive clinical testing. I know Dr. Stanford's here and he's going to talk about the clinical multicenter study. And I am one of the, the seven uh, North American ambassadors uh, who is involved in the Ambassador 1 and Ambassador 2 programs. And the only benchtop study that I will mention, because it involves the implant itself, um, is the strength or the robustness of the implant. And when 30 degree off axis loading was performed with these implants compared to their predecessors of similar diameter, the strength of the implant was between 11 and 20% stronger. So we have a stronger implant, which means more confidence. And if we look at the 4.2 millimeter straight EV implant compared to its 4.0 straight predecessor, we now have an implant 17% stronger than what we were using just a few months ago. And this is something that should only instill confidence in us using this with our patients. So let's take a clinical example, <clears throat> excuse me, an example uh, from the ambassador study of the sister-in-law of a referring dentist, very good dentist, uh, had an unrestorable maxillary bicuspid tooth and not very excited about the prospect of wearing a, a removable prosthesis temporarily or being without a tooth. And so we placed a 4.2 conical, and we'll talk in, in, in much more detail about the dimensions of these implants, but a 4.2 millimeter conical by 13 implant. And the implant's placed immediately, keeping a safe distance from that buccal plate. The voids between the implant and the socket walls are filled with mineralized bone. 
And certainly as, as a surgeon who doesn't, who didn't really think he was ever going to be doing this ever, uh, but now being part of the immediate temporization process, uh, having an impression coping that only takes one hand to insert where you really feel a very stable fit uh, has simplified things for me a great deal. So we take an impression here, a surgical impression, and then I will place loosely a healing abutment and take a periderm, uh, dermal allograft used as both a membrane and a tissue thickening agent, stretch it over the healing abutment and close the site. And now she will go directly to the dentist's office and he will make her a screw retained provisional crown. And this one was made based on that impression and the model uh, and a vacuum form template. This is six weeks after immediate temporization. And these pre-manufactured temporary abutments have six possible positions. So it's a very versatile uh, piece of the armamentarium for temporization here. And it's left out of occlusion. And this is at about 10 weeks. A custom impression coping is made based on the contours of the provisional crown. And we have a patient-specific Atlantis abutment and a cement-retained restoration. And total treatment time was about 10 weeks. And so a very versatile and easy to use uh, system. Now, what are the dimensions of the straight implants? Excluding the three millimeter implant, we have a 3.6, a 4.2, 4.8, and now a 5.4 millimeter uh, straight implant. And the length of the micro threads is three and a half millimeters for all of these, except for the six millimeter implant, where it's a millimeter shorter uh, to enhance the number of uh, macro threads. And the conical implant did not go away. It was just improved upon where the length of the micro threads has been shortened from five and a half millimeters to four millimeters. So we, we have increased primary stability with the greater number of macro threads, still keeping the, the biomanagement complex, but we have the micro threads that we've come accustomed to. And when we talk about micro threads, and certainly hopefully you won't get up after I'm through or before I'm through and walk around at other forums, but you know what they say about imitation. And I would just remind everybody in the room that there can only be one original micro thread. And it's been part of the Astrotech biomanagement system since 1991. And so that has not changed. That is a constant with this implant system. As Bjorn mentioned, based on dental anatomy, uh, this is a crown down approach. You have the versatility of wider or slightly narrower implants for posterior sites, and you have different options for the narrower uh, incisor regions as well. A brief mention on Clark's study, I, I will only mention this because as the surgeon in the room, I have found this to be completely relative to, to my experience with the EV, and that is that my perception of primary stability is certainly greater with the EV system, as he was able to show in his study the uh, higher insertion torque with the EV versus the TX, but still not a crazy 45, 50 mil, um, insertion torque that some implant companies are pushing. And why is that relevant? Well, Dr. Norton showed us that when insertion torque reaches 25 Newton centimeters or sometimes even less, these implants can be immediately temporized and will lose virtually no bone up to nine years. And so an extremely high insertion torque is really not the make it or break it for a successful implant. Now, as I mentioned, I was part of the U.S. Uh, ambassador group, uh, one of the seven, and had an opportunity to use this system. This is the breakdown uh, as of January from the first ambassador program. Uh, the majority of these implants were straight. The 4.2 seemed to be the workhorse uh, with the 4.8 and the 3.6 as well. I probably placed half of the conicals because I really like those conical implants. Uh, but what has not changed is the osseous speed surface. And we've known this for many years, that the, um, the rate of osseo integration is significantly faster uh, with the osseous speed surface than the blasted surface. And we've seen in clinical studies radiographically that a year after loading, whether these are the straight or the conical implants, that virtually no marginal bone will be found to, to remodel or actually model uh, with this biomanagement complex. And that has not changed. Now, as far as insertion, I know many of you in the room are already AstroTech users. Uh, when, you, when you get your EV kit, 
you will have three options as far as how you'd like to set it up. You can keep it very simple for only the straight implants excluding the 3.0. You can pretty much do everything with the second insert except the short. And the third one is the all-inclusive. And being in private practice and not liking to really confuse my staff and, and keep things still relatively simple, I just stick with the third tray. And this lets me put pretty much any type of EV implant in that I choose uh, without having to swap instruments in and out of the tray. And this is my surgical setup of the third tray. Now, what are the improvements to the tray? This was well thought out from the armamentarium to the science of the implant itself. And instead of going through this roadmap with the old surgical tray, even with the most complicated of the new EV inserts, we have a very streamlined uh, surgical setup for us here. And the, the mindset or, or the amount of thinking that you have to do in terms of preparation, whether we're going into soft bone, whether we're going into dense bone, standard bone, and, and pilot drills, has really been simplified here where you can see how much simpler the fewer number of steps that are required to place the straight EV implant of similar dimensions. And really the only thought process going along here is the thickness of that cortical bone. And if you have denser bone or two millimeters or more of cortical thickness, you're going to use the B cortical drill. If you have thinner bone, you would use the A. A lot of times in immediate placements, uh, neither one of these are really necessary. It's become as easy as following the numbers. When you place one of these implants, if you don't want to think at all, you can just look at the kit. And the kit will guide you by the numbers on which drill you go to next. And these inserts are on the kit. For the conical, you're going to start at the apical diameter of the smaller size before that platform. And then you're going to use your conical drills. And the drill logics have really simplified things because the subsequent drill serves as the pilot drill. So there's no longer a need for pilot drills uh, with this EV system. And depending on the bone density, you have the option to widen the apical portion of the osteotomy or almost the entire length of the osteotomy. But why is this important? Well, I've heard people say that things like pressure necrosis don't exist. And, and there's a, a well-known person who likes to recall uh, pressure necrosis as a unicorn, something nobody has seen. And, and I will tell you that I have seen some unicorns uh, in my practice through the years uh, using various implant systems, and, and, um, and, and it's been published in the literature that sometimes an overly compressive or traumatic surgery may lead to implant failure. This is a very precise, minimally traumatic insertion with a higher level of stability than we are accustomed to. The insertion device has changed as well. It's a much more firm, locking, feeling tactily when you're catching the implant in its uh, holder. And when you place the implant, you just want to keep one of these dimples to the buckle aspect uh, for orientation of the prosthetic abutments. So let's look at a clinical case, a woman with a very thin biotype, about a pack and a half a day smoker, uh, fractured the clinical crown off of tooth number nine and a 3.6 by 13 millimeter EV is placed. Keeping our distance from that buccal plate, we know from Evans and Chen, implants with a more buccal position will experience significantly more facial recession. Spray taught us 15 years ago uh, that we need a certain amount of buccal bone thickness if we wanna prevent soft tissue recession. And we know from the, the, the large multicenter study done a few years ago, uh, that clinically the buccal plate of most maxillary anterior teeth, uh, excluding molars, is relatively thin. And when bicuspids are excluded, not even 3% of these teeth have a buccal plate of 2 millimeters or greater. Uh, what Roe showed us when they did immediate placements, grafting the void between the implant and the, the facial wall, and temporized that a year out on a cone beam, crustal remodeling was still occurring, and some recession had occurred. And the same group looked at a, up to eight years, but about four years on the average with a flapless placement and temporization without any augmentation, found the thinner biotype patients were much more prone to significant gingival recession, but all sites lost some tissue height. And that this type of recession is really dynamic and continues long after that first year of implant placement. So for this thin biotype patient, we go belt and suspenders 
and we augment both the internal aspects of the socket and the external with the mineralized allograft. You have your options here to use either triangular two-piece healing abutments, the narrower uni abutments, cover screws, and healing abutments. If you're going to use the round, they are non-indexed. Uh, if you're going to use the triangular to, to kind of further contour the soft tissues, uh, you have six possibilities as far as how you'd like to position them. My favorite material uh, in the last year or so, the periodermal, we're using both as a membrane and a tissue thickening agent here. And this is available on either the thinner sizes or thicker uh, thickness, depending on your application and what you're trying to accomplish. An interesting study from Linkovicious showed that patients who had thinner mucosa over implants lost four times as much bone uh, at one year out compared to those with uh, the, the, the thicker tissue. But when he augmented those sites with a dermal allograft, there was actually less bone loss than even those with naturally occurring thicker tissue. And my view is that if I'm going to use a dermal allograft, I want to use one that most closely resembles human skin or human tissue, and that would be the periodermal. Uh, we go for a transmucosal closure here, and the patient's wearing a removable uh, temporary prosthesis. She, at about eight weeks, she sees her restorative dentist, who starts the provisionalization process to start molding the soft tissue, which leads to the fabrication here of a patient-specific gold hue Atlantis abutment and a porcelain-fused to metal crown, and this is the completed case. A flapless surgery, because I don't like to offend the people in the room who think everything should be done flapless. Here, a bicuspid case where we had a fractured uh, number 13 that was splinted to number 12, and the implant of 4.2 straight by 11 millimeter EV was placed with primary stability, the void filled with the allograft, and here the periodermal was just punched and stretched and, and just sutured for uh, compression, and this is the six week healing. And then again, we go to the restorative. These are our photos taken from the restorative dentist here. Very easy to use, impression copings here, firmly attached. And again, a patient-specific Atlantis abutment and a cement-retained crown. Let's look at a more complex case, a patient who's been treated all over the Philadelphia area over the last 15 years, and some previously placed implants and failing natural teeth both in the maxillary and mandibular arch, unwilling to wear any kind of removable prosthesis, and not a lot of healthy mucosa around these lower anterior teeth. So the thought process is that her occlusal plane is going to need to be corrected, which will be done with implants uh, in the maxillary left quadrant as well. A prefabricated provisional bridge is then made. And we take our CBCT, we do our planning. The remaining natural teeth are extracted. We're placing 4.2 millimeter EVs in the more posterior sites and we have the 3.6, so we can preserve as much of this facial bone in the more anterior sites. And now we're going to go for a screw-retained provisional. And the new uni abutment is really nice. It has a 33-degree angle, which means that implants can be 66 degrees offset and still be able to have a screw-retained restoration. One driver, as the periodontist putting this on uh, for my dentist at the time of surgery, this is a much easier and versatile way to do things. We have the impression copings for these uni abutments that are available in two diameters. And we augment everything with the mineralized allograft and the periodermal is punched. And just a brief word on the allograft sources and why MTF really is, is uh, something that I have a lot of confidence in is that it's a tissue bank, a nonprofit formed by orthopedic surgeons. They defer 97% of their donors. This is a very uh, reputable uh, accredited tissue bank. So we suture the site, I take this impression uh, for my restorative dentist, we attach these analogs, and we pour the model for him to make, uh, to convert that prefabricated provisional in his office. So we put the uni heel caps on, and the patient leaves my office and heads up to the dentist office. He lets two of these EV implants rest, just I think more for ease of trying not to connect everything, and just a fail safe in case something were to go wrong but we have immediate loading of the full arch. The maxillary left teeth were removed and implants were placed there as well. Now these are the fixture level impressions uh, that he took to restore the case. And these are custom abutments made. And now you can observe that pink keratinized mucosa around the implants where we had very thin, angry 
tissue, but this was grafted with both allograft bone and the periderm around the EV implants. And this is delivery of the lower prosthesis and the case completed. And now the occlusal plane on the left side has also been corrected before and after. And using an implant with greater sense of primary stability made us feel much more confident uh, doing this type of treatment. A common story in a private practice is a patient who had a tooth extracted, disappeared for a few years, and then came back because the adjacent tooth had failed. And so this is where the conical implant really seemed to, to fit the bill here. We have a, a 4.8 millimeter platform with a 4.1 millimeter, with a 4.2 millimeter body. So we're able to stay a safe distance from the lingual concavities. The directional indicators are really quite nice and, and very stable when you place them in clinically for radiographs and for clinical appreciation of your implant positions. After the drill number one, you can use the first end or the narrower end up to six millimeters to the line. And after drill number three, the wider end will insert. And, and, and they're very stable. And then you can take radiographs as you need to. And if you want to appreciate where the diameter of that implant will be, you can turn it to the 5.4 if you're going for the wider implant. And in the narrower sites, this will still fit if you're placing a 3.0. 4.8 by 11 millimeter EV conicals are placed. And this was the first EV case I, I did, and I was really excited to play with as many of the parts and pieces as I possibly could. And I didn't know what I was going to do with these, but I was looking at them, and I thought, well, she's the last patient of the day, so I'm going to make custom healing abutments out of them and try to uh, sculpt the tissue a little bit. And this was six weeks of healing, and I don't know how pertinent it was really to do this. It probably wasn't. Uh, but it gave us the opportunity uh, to capture a more anatomically shaped uh, mucosal anatomy. And now patient-specific Atlantis abutments that only will seat in one position can be placed. As Bjorn said, the torque is the same for all of these abutment screws. And this is the finished case. Let's look at early placement. This is the wife of a dentist. Uh, came in and completely ruined my schedule, complaining that she had cracked number 12 and it had to come out today. Uh, extracted the tooth on an emergency basis, and I saw her back at four weeks. And at four weeks, she had told me she had had enough looking like a hillbilly. She was not going to go another day. And I needed to make her a temporary crown as well. And so the extraction site is debrided. And a 4.2 conical EV is placed. So the length or the diameter of the body of this implant is 3.6 millimeters. We know from Chang and Wenstrom that these implants can be placed up to 2 millimeters to the adjacent teeth, and virtually no bone loss will occur at up to eight years. Again, perioderm is then sutured around this provisional after grafting of the socket. Uh, this is a technique that will be in, in uh, the PRD later this year. And now we're using one of these peak abutments here to modify and make her a provisional restoration that is completely out of uh, any occlusal contact. And this type of a technique I published uh, with my colleague, Dr. Wilk, last year, looking at 29 osseous speed implants, uh, 27 patients. And at over 12 months loading, 86% of them, the marginal bone radiographically, was at or above the implant platform. And we had no implant failures. So this is two months after placement. And you can see that between the temporization and that dermal allograft, it almost looks as if an autogenous connective tissue graft was performed uh, around this temporary restoration. Now he's going to make a crown for his wife uh, on the canine, and he's taking impressions here. And then he just puts that back. Now I know I've seen Dr. Cooper present how he's made screw-retained uh, restorations with this system. And this is uh, how he did it an Emax crown bonded uh, to the prosthetic abutment for a screw retained uh, crown for the EV implant. And now I think you can appreciate the virtue of the conical implant where we have the appropriate platform restoratively, but we're able to stay away from the adjacent tooth without having to go too close with a 4.2 millimeter straight. So the versatility here uh, is really highlighted. This is the only patient I will show you that is not restored, but I'll, you'll see why I'm showing this in just a moment. Uh, horizontally fractured central incisor. 
I've learned to embrace the titanium temporary uh, abutments here and using opaque composite, something as a periodontist I thought I would never have to do. But you can appreciate the horizontal fracture of tooth number nine. So the tooth is extracted and we're placing the implant in a palatal position, staying far away from that bone. Uh, Valentini did a study that was very similar to mine, in except for the way that it was temporized and the grafting, but found that this type of treatment is extremely successful with virtually no marginal bone loss at one year. And Capelli talks about the need for augmentation and the rationale when we have a distance from the implant to that external plate of, of less than four millimeters, he advocates grafting within the socket and without. Again, we know from Peng, we want that implant to be in a palatal position. So the implant is placed, the socket is, is grafted with the mineralized allograft, and a surgical impression is taken, and now she's gonna go up to the dentist. But before, we're going to do internal and external grafting. Here's using the periderm, and now the patient is off to his dentist, and this is how he looked when he left the dentist office that day, out of occlusal contact, but same day, has a tooth. This is 10 days, and this is five weeks. And at about seven weeks, he went for impressions. But instead of a regular impression, something that is not available yet, but will be, is the EV scan body. And using the Itero scanner, these are shot, this is the clinical view, and then these are the screenshots of the digital impression with the Itero scanner and the scan body. A digital and clinical model is made and a zirconia Atlantis uh, patient-specific abutment is fabricated. And with the, the audacity this patient had to go to Disney World, uh, he wasn't finished yet. But the last case I will show you is a woman who I had extracted tooth number three, performed socket preservation in July of 2012. And then every other tooth in her mouth went downhill. And she wound up having a lot of implant therapy uh, by the time we got around to treating the upper right, teeth numbers four and five had become hopeless due to caries. So they were extracted. These again, osteotomy preparation here after the third drill and crown down approach, 4.2, a conical, a straight, and a 4.8 straight, allograft and periderm. And we know if this tissue is not of sufficient thickness, whether you use a platform switch or not, you're going to have that remodeling because the biologic width always wins. So we have transmucosal closure, primary stability. This is at six weeks. At nine weeks, with very healthy, thick peri-implant mucosa, she sees her dentist for impressions. He has patient-specific Atlantis abutments fabricated for three individual crowns. And this is the day of delivery. And so I would like to sum up with saying and following up with what Bjorn said, and I'm sure what you'll hear for the rest of the morning, is that this is an evolution guided through science and clinical success. And that is really the combination that matters. And this EV system is easier to place. It is more predictable as far as its healing. It's an easier restorative process. We get predictable function in a short period of time with predictable aesthetics and stable function. Overall, this evolution is just leading to better outcomes. And the combination of this EV system with the bone allograft and the soft tissue allograft from Symbios are really pushing this evolution. And so I would like to say that at this point, my surgical experience with the implant system EV has been pretty good so far. And so with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention.